Are you here? Your presence here, listening to the Paul Leslie Hour, truly puts smiles on our faces. Look at this grin. We are pleased to present an interview from our archives with Nico Moon. Now, this is from 2009 and originally broadcast on radio before his name was Nico Moon. That's not what's important, though. Hey, you may have heard Nico Moon's new album entitled Better Days is out. If not, listen to it. Let us know what you think. You know what else? You can also help keep the Paul Leslie Hour going, going, and going. Yeah, just visit thepaulleslie.com slash support, and we thank you. This interview was recorded at Carroll Street Cafe in Cabbage Town, Georgia. You'll even hear the coffee and sandwich being brought out. It's an intimate kind of chat. It's being brought to you for posterity reasons. So let's listen, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, we're joined here by Mr. Nick Cowan. Thanks so much for making the time to do this on this beautiful day. Who is Nick Cowan? I mean, what do you mean? That's a complicated question. It is a complicated question. Who's the man himself? These people that are out on seeing this this tour. I know by special. Just a guy that loves music. We all love different things. I love music. I'm just a normal person. It just happens to play music. Now, tell us a little bit about this tour that you're on. The Breaking Southern Ground Tour. Um, you know, Zay Brown, and he's always done opening acts, but this is his first tour where he actually headlines. And, you know, he's from Atlanta, I'm from Atlanta, and so are the other two artists, Sonia Lee and Levi Lowry. We all kind of played the same scenes, and so inevitably we all kind of, you know, all three of us ran into Zach, and, you know, he believes in our music and what we're doing, so when he started his own record label, Southern Ground Records, he signed us. And now we're doing a tour together called the Southern Ground Tour, which is pretty much all four of us together. He's the headline in that, and we're his support acts, me being one of the three. I think most stories are best from the beginning. So tell all the listeners out there where you're from. I'm from Tyler, Texas. It's in East Texas, about an hour away from Dallas, the most capital of the world. I moved out here when I think I was like 11, maybe 11 or 12. My, my mom got a job out here, so I moved out here. I've been living in Atlanta ever since. And what kind of music did you listen to growing up? You know, my parents had really good taste in music. My dad's a drummer and my mom sings. It was a very musical environment I was raised in. I was constantly around. They were writing songs together all the time. So I was just constantly around music being made in the house and lighting being done. And so it just was natural. Thank you. It was just uh, a natural thing. But uh, I grew up listening to a lot of uh, uh they listen to a lot of like Neil Young, James Taylor, and just, you know, good artists like that. So I grew up listening to a lot of singer-songwriters. And, you know, I love Southern music, like all my brothers and stuff like that. You know, that's kind of what I grew up on. That Southern folk, you know, era of the 60s and 70s. That's pretty much what I listened. I didn't really listen to like 80s music or anything, you know. Mm-hmm. And then later in life, I started listening to more soul music. I got really into like Otis Redding and Sam Cooke and Donny Hathaway and cats like that. And it really changed my perspective on how to sing. They just sing with a different inflection than other types of music, you know. So I've kind of like tried to figure the best way I can to mix those two worlds together. You know, I'm a Southern person, so I want to do Southern music, you know. But I love soul. And even growing up here in Atlanta, I love urban music a lot. And so there's even almost i don't want to say a uh, hip-hop but there's an urban inflection on some songs so i like all kinds of music man I just i like i just like good music and if it's good i like it and i don't know i got an assortment of the things i'm into so i guess it kind of is reflected through my songs i don't really sit down and look at myself as being a certain type of artist you know i just kind of write what uh however i feel like one day i might feel like writing a country song one day i feel like writing a rock song i might feel like writing a soul song even an urban song just depends on the moment and you're working on a record at the time. And I was hoping you could tell us about who you're working with on that album and when it's going to be coming out and just a little bit about it. Well, Zach is producing it. Zach, uh, sorry, Zach Brown. And 
of course, he's going to be on it. Chris Fryer's playing drums on it. And Mr. Batman Gano is playing bass. One of my favorite bass players and drummers that, that are out there. So I feel very fortunate to have really good musicians on the record. And, you know, of course, Clay Cup. And I'm really good friends with a guy by the name of Ryan Newell, who's the, the guitarist for Sister Hazel. And uh, we're really good friends. And he's actually the one who produced my EP. And he's going to be playing guitar on the record on a, on a few songs. Um, Sean Mullins is going to sing on a, on a song called uh, Reno. And uh, got a couple other special guests, but we'll wait till then. But it comes out in January. Very good. January 2010. Now, when somebody goes to hear you perform on this tour, or any tour for that matter, or when they listen to something you recorded, what do you hope the listener gets out of the experience of hearing your um, music? I kind of want to take take people through a bunch of different kinds of feelings. You know, I got some songs that are, I'll, 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 in a show, I'll play everything from like a little song to a party song to, you know, maybe a song about life or maybe a story song. It's just about a random story about someone, but I, mean, I guess mainly I want them to think and I want them to have a good time and enjoy themselves, be able to clap and laugh and, you know, I just want to bring happiness, you know, to me, music makes me happy and I try to reflect it through my music, you know, I want people to, enjoy it, be able to listen to it and, and make them smile or make them think, you know, whatever moment they're in. Very good. It seems like a simple question, but it doesn't always have an easy answer. What is it you like about music? It allows me to to explain my feelings in a way that I can't explain in a, any other way comfortably. I can't draw I'm an artistic person, but I can't draw, I can't paint, I can't sculpt, you know. But I like to create things. And music is just, I don't know, I've always been fascinated with it since I was a baby. So, you know, I've always played different instruments growing up and been saying, and it's just something I love to do. And, not, you know, music for me is kind of like my therapy when I really didn't have the money to go to therapy. <laughs> oh. I could sit down and write a song and whatever I was going through, I could. I could talk about it, and it helps me like, deal with everything in my life. You know, everything I go through in life, I I write about because I write every day. And so, whether I'm up or down, I'm gonna write about it. You know, I don't know. It helps me think about my life, and to me, it helps me to just be overall happy with my life. Very good answer. I wanted to also just touch on this a little bit. You mentioned that you're a creative person by nature, and in addition to music. You also experiment with photography. Yeah, I love photography. Uh, I'm not near as good as I wish I was. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just got into it maybe in the past two years, and I really like it. It's really cool. Man. It's, a, it's a different medium for me. So I'm having fun being creative in a way that I've never been creative before. It's fun. And there's things you can do in photography that you know you can't do in music. Other way around, you know, so it's, I, I just enjoy things like that. So I would like to learn a lot more. Hopefully one day I can... You know, I like, I like to take some classes on it. I mean, right now it's just from reading. I, you know, I've read up on it and try to understand as good, as well as I possibly can without actually having any school on it. So I'm still a novice big time, <laughs> but I enjoy it. You're one of the artists on Zach Brown's Southern Ground record label. Right. Tell us about how you met Mr. Brown. I had opened up for him a few times. We have a mutual friend by the name of Francisco Vidal. And... Francisco hired Zach to play a few shows around town, and since we were really good friends, you know, he would call me up and ask me if I wanted to open up for Zach. And, uh, you know, I love Zach's music. I, you know, heard him plenty of times before I ever met him. You know, I enjoyed his music and would go up to Dixie Tavern and listen to him play and thought it was great, you know, so you know, I thought it was a great opportunity for me to open up in front of his crowd and open up for him a few times, but, you know, Never had the chance of him actually, you know, being around while I was doing the opening act for him to hear me until this one this one night when I played in Kelton at a place called The Mansion. And he played, you know, he was playing there and I opened up for him and he just so happened to, you know, hear me that night and he enjoyed it. And we met and he kind of told me a little bit about what he was planning on doing as far as Southern Ground Records and all that. And, and it then actually happened. I didn't actually sign until maybe nine ten months late from that point but we started our relationship from there and kept in touch and started writing a meeting and writing together and talking about these ideas and we just uh we were late in a good way you know we see out as far as 
what we believe about music and how we believe music should be handled, you know, as far as our careers go. So I felt like I can trust him. And that's everything in this business. It's trust. That's all you got. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I was interviewing John Driscoll Hopkins, and he was telling me about all the people that you get to meet on the road yeah. uh, with this tour. He mentioned Kid Rock. Tell us about the most interesting person you've met on the road. I, mean, I would probably say the three or four most interesting people I've met have been the people that I'm on the road with. So I've actually got to know people, you know, because of coming in the situation, I've got to meet his band, all the guys in his band. and uh, Yeah, that'd be great. Even as far as Sonia Lee and Levi Lowry, you know, I've got to know them and, and, and get to be friends with them. I didn't really know them before, so. Oh, I just struggled a little bit on your table. Yeah, okay. I'm really sorry. <laughs> By the way, ladies and gentlemen, this is being recorded at Carroll Street Cafe. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I would probably have to say, I mean, Zach has some of the best players out there in his band. And I mean, these are guys that... I mean, for example, like Clay Cook. I mean, if you're in music and you're in Atlanta, you know who Clay Cook is. I mean, he's his name is is very big and he's very well known. You know, and I'm a big fan of his music and just to like be able to be on the road with with guys that are on that level. You know, is it's, yeah, and get get to actually know them on a personal basis is is really cool. It's a uh, yeah, probably the top three most interesting people I've met have been people from the road. Well, I'm actually I'm hanging out with on a daily basis. Of the songs that you've written, which song to you is the most meaningful? Or if you could even pick one. Reno. This is one of my favorites. Um, I don't know why for some reason, but some of my slower ones happen to be some of my favorites. I got a song called Cold Hearted. It means a lot to me. But I like Reno a lot because it's it's the one that uh, Sean, Sean Mons will be singing with me at the Fox show. That song. And as far as we have it planned right now, he'll, he'll be singing it with me on the record. But it's... Uh, it's a song about destiny and these two people from really random situations and a, a female singer songwriter from Louisiana and a, and a painter from Caribbean meet each other in Reno, Nevada and fall in love at a casino. And I think I like it a lot cause it's, it's really twisted. And I, I kind of like look at it. I'm like, where did that come from? <laughs> where did that story come from? But it's a, to me, it's a beautiful love story, you know? And about how it doesn't sometimes it doesn't matter what you do and you don't do and what someone else does it doesn't do you know your meeting you know is destiny or serendipity or whatever you want to call it you know and it's a massive mystery and people don't understand like the intricacies of falling in love and what it's all about it's just mysterious and I think that song kind of captures that feeling you know I take it you believe in destiny what I mean yeah yeah well, I have two final questions. What is your all-time favorite meal? Uh, my mama's tuna casserole. Tuna casserole? Yeah, it's real cheap. You can make it. You make it probably seven dollars. We didn't really have a lot of money growing up as a kid, and so a lot of what we ate was made really cheap. But there's something about it, just the way she makes it. You know, it's just like takes me back. You know, mm-hmm. makes yeah. You know, you connect food with emotional feelings. You know, so yeah. Every time I eat it and she cooks it for me, it's just like I feel loved. You know. <laughs> yeah. Even though it's seven a seven dollar meal, I'd rather have that than a flaming mignon, no doubt. <laughs> well, if this broadcast goes out all over the world. My final question: What would you like to say to all those people listening? The record don't have a name for it yet. We're still working on it, but it comes out in January. And check it out. I hope you like it. I hope you enjoy it. And if you do, hit me up on uh, on my Facebook or on my MySpace, and let me know what you think. I'd appreciate to uh, you know any feedback. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick Cowan. Thank you so much, sir. You had a pleasure. We thank you and appreciate you dropping in for the Paul Leslie Hour today. You know, you can help the Paul Leslie Hour in our mission to provide independent media content like this by visiting www.thepaulleslie.com slash support. We truly thank you. This is your announcer speaking. Performance of the Entertainer intro song and Corina Corina outro song, courtesy of John Primerano. Well, that's it for today. So until next time, be safe and be good.